previously on Boston Med. Are you asking me out? <laughs> Gonna get down on one knee. You'd yeah. think work would be a great place to meet somebody, but you know what? There's no McDreamies or McSteamies. You take some people out of this environment and then they're not so cute. What does that mean? A thousand miles, it's hard to hear you through the static, searching for something to say. Boston, home to three of America's greatest hospitals, Mass General the Brigham, and Children's. These are the stories of the men and women who work in them. I've never seen a guy piss off more nurses than you on rounds. Are you in love? I like her. Chest is okay. What's that? Is that a bruise? Got the bruising. Okay, quick chest and then and then CT nose. So we'll get everything scanned from head to toe, brain, chest, abdomen, and we'll see. Go from there. I don't find being upset or showing emotion or being angry about something and expressing that. I don't. I don't find that terrible. That's good enough for the moment. It'll need to be redone. If it's in the name of helping a patient. Getting dirty is no problem. So far, I'm not. Uh, yep. I want to come and check the trauma head. Very good news for her. Nothing in the brain. Is that propofol running? No. Good. No, she. I got fentanyl and Versed. She doesn't need Versed, though, either. Okay. She didn't get any Versed, right? Good. Thank you. No, she didn't get anything. Good. No. I just have it in case. Good. Oh. Uh, the one with the scalp laceration? Yeah. Pressure had dropped down a bit, like, within the last hour, but now it's back Proof. up. Propofol. She's on propofol. Uh, actually, uh, she's on actually propofol. She's on Versed. I'm the mistake because I specifically said no benzos in that patient. If you give somebody a really strong medication like Versed, you're going to prolong the period of time that they have to have a breathing tube in place. We gave we snowed her to so a lack. Come on, no, guys. Well, it was a lack. It was when pressure was fifty at that time. Oh. You give them a medication that really tends to hang out for a long period of time, it's going to mess around with their ability to be extubated. Why did she get versed? In the scanner. Why? Why did she get versed? I was very specific. This woman has no injury. She's got no brain injury. She doesn't need to be intubated. Here's my problem. We have a patient who got intubated, probably didn't need to because she has no head injury. And now we've given her a benzo. So we're not going to be able to extubate her. So now we've just extended the period of time and made her more vulnerable to pneumonia. I get so feisty about benzos. I, did, I wasn't yelling, was I? Oh, no, it was, it was yeah, you were. perfect. At one point, you actually grabbed your face. And I thought you were going to rip it off. <laughs> <laughs> There's a rule in the hospital that before you go into any patient's room and when you walk out of a patient's room, you always have to use Perel on your hands. I'm big into the rules, so always wash your hands. You can just, you can relax right now. This month, I'm in the emergency department. I, I really like the change of pace. Just a different scene. Uh, I think variety is good. <laughs> Forty-nine year old gentleman with a long history of alcohol and heroin abuse, and he was found lying down on the street earlier today. And uh, now he's just a little bit too high. What are you guys laughing about? Don't think if someone's having a manic episode you want to be laughing. That guy was pretty entertaining, I have to admit. You seem extremely happy at the moment. Oh yeah. You're bouncing up and down and you're and you're yeah, you know, making a lot of noise. 
But I'm, I'm okay. Okay. I'm okay. And I'm okay. Did anybody ever talk to you about the about the possibility of you having bipolar disorder? Bipolar disorder? Yeah. Yeah. No? Talk to me now, doctor, no. because I don't know what it is. Well, bipolar disorder is when sometimes you feel very depressed and other times you feel very, uh, very happy, very excited. Sometimes. A lot of times. A lot of times? Okay. Can we give you a sandwich? Are you hungry? Yes. Yes, yeah. I am. Okay. All right. I need some food. Bring me a lot of food, Papa. Yeah. He's either manic or he's psychotic. Uh, very happy. Uh, he's certainly not suicidal or homicidal, right? I mean, so that's all good stuff. Uh -huh. Medicine, you know, really saved my brother's life. My brother, growing up, had Hodgkin's disease and had to go through nine months of chemo and three months of radiation treatments. That's a sandwich. I'm gonna eat it all. Um, I am very hungry. I love America. This is the land of the honey. Do you remember me? The rule is you always Purell every patient, but maybe him I gave a couple extra pumps on the Purell station. Just got a page for a 39-year-old woman who is 27 weeks pregnant who was shot in the left chest in order to protect the baby, protect her as well, optimize her care, and then we'll be able to optimize the care of the baby. Excuse me, excuse me. And if she is dying, then we may have to make the decision to take the baby. Coming in. So we'll just have to see what she looks like. This is a 39-year-old female, gunshot wound to the right upper arm, coming through her right chest. Everybody She's not out. running the trauma, get out. Obvious entry wound with large hematoma, the right chest. Can we please get a chest tube in on the right? All right, how you guys doing on the left? Chest tube on the left? We got a problem, guys. There's, There's blood in the left chest. chest. Let's get a stat chest x-ray and then we need to go to the OR. Let us know when you want us to look the baby. I don't care about the fast of the baby. I want to know about the chest right now, okay? When you see a pregnant woman, people tend to start to get confused about the priorities because if mom goes bad, because you didn't do something, then you've done the baby no service. Uh, no, no, no more lines, no more lines. I'm just trying to make a decision. We're going to the OR, we're going to the scanner. What's coming out of that chest? Let me take a quick look at that. Sure. Have to see that chest x-ray. If there's a chest full of blood, I'm not going to waste time. A cat scan, she'll bleed to death. Let's we'll need to go find the hole and fix the hole now. I There you go. Not good. And she's got a left chest that's got a bunch of blood in it. We need to find that bleed now. We've got to get her to the OR right now. Those are aviators. Yeah, I know, but I don't like them. Oh, geez, those are beastly. <laughs> it's like Tom Cruise. When I was four, I was diagnosed with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. It's pretty much when the septum of the heart is, like, enlarged. So it's harder for the heart to function and pump blood. Oh, those are intense. I'd need a heart transplant. I don't care for the waiting, but I'm willing to wait because after it's going to be worth it. I don't even think I'm allowed to go to junior prom. Oh, really? Why? Since I'm not in school. Oh, that's true. Granted, they probably like jump through hoops for me, but oh, <laughs> you know what? That's okay. I'm not. I'm probably not going to junior prom either. I think Sarah is an incredible, incredible kid with an amazing amount of strength and determination, and I, I think that's going to only help her through this process. Here's my room. Those are all, like, college application letters and stuff. That whole, like, stack was just when I was in the hospital. A lot of people ask if I think about it every day. Oh, is the heart gonna come today? Is it gonna come today? It's not really like that. That is one of my favorite people on earth right there, Andrew McMahon. He's a singer and a pianist. He actually had leukemia. One of his lyrics was, it's good to be alive. So it's more like inspirational stuff rather than like, woe is me, I can't like live and deal with this problem. I keep making her do all of her PT. 
I collapsed on the hallway floor. Well, you collapsed <laughs> on the hallway floor because your muscles were so tired, or because no, you were sick? No, I was out of breath. You were out of yeah. breath. It would be okay to stop right before collapsing. <laughs> Ready? Sarah's gotten sicker and sicker over the last six months. I worry that if we don't find her heart soon, that she'll die. Listen up, everybody. She is diabetic. She is allergic to penicillin. We don't see pregnant women who are that severely injured all that often, a couple times a year, perhaps. What? Do you want us to put the monitor on the baby and then you'll prep over it? No, you can't have the belly. You don't want to monitor the baby through the surgery? Nope. Baby's heart rate was 130. That's not terrible. The best way to save the baby is save mom. I, I just, I can't see the bullet on a chest x-ray, so I don't know where it went. Did it go through the pericardium, go through the heart? Does she have a heart injury? You know, we need to find out what's bleeding. Incision. We're starting. Someone in the room, please turn on the other surgical light. I know you guys don't know. Just find the switch somewhere. So you you guys know what we're dealing with right now. Right now we know we got two holes in the heart. And the bullet must be back here somewhere, right? It's right. This is what's bleeding. I see this end here. This is making me nervous. That is bleeding. So put a stitch in that thing. Start with that, please. Very few circumstances require you to think and think as clearly and methodically on the run, on the fly, with limited information, as does trauma surgery. She's lucky. That bullet grazed the heart. It could have just as easily passed through the heart, penetrating the heart, and she would have bled to death. Both she and the baby would have died within seconds. They found the bullet? Really? Oh, I feel so much better knowing where it is. Okay, take it out. Okay. Actually, can we call security, please? And uh, do we have an evidence bag? So, uh, do you have a metal tray? Ready? Okay. This could have been much worse. I mean, she's far from out of the woods. You know, just get the mom well and you get the baby well. The drama in medicine is that you do the best you can for every patient, but you never know what the outcome will be. I mean, look at the Dumas family. Look at the challenges that family is facing. Sarah tried pushing herself a little bit too hard, probably about a month and a half ago at school. Like, I don't think anyone else has ever felt that kind of chest pain. And it's just excruciating. After transplant, like, I'm not a very athletic person, but it'll be like, I want to try to run a mile. Day. You know? I'm not a very athletic person. No. Understatement of the day. <laughs> My brother also has hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. He's actually going to begin the transplant process probably within the next year. Next year, you should run a marathon. That'd be so funny to watch. What did I do when I found out I was going to get a transplant? I can't even remember when you did find out. How did I react? I don't remember. I personally was having an internal freakout session. When they were talking about transplant for both of them, I was not, it wasn't even in the realm of possibility in my mind. Yeah, it wasn't for me either. But afterwards, I guess I like figured out, oh, this is kind of the only option for me, you know? And, you know, I'll have like a life after this and it'll be like completely different. The transplanted heart could last 20 years, maybe longer, if we can keep her alive and healthy to take advantage of some of the new scientific discoveries 20 years from now. This would be a bridge to something new, and maybe she can have a long and normal life. Ah! Never know what's gonna happen in the emergency department. Every day is a little different. Hi. You never know what's coming at you, and you just sort of roll with, with whatever happens. Good night, guys. When their dad lets them know that he's on his way home, then they love to, to stake it out. They get excited to see him when he hasn't been home for a while. Are you getting on? I don't know, really. 
You steering? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Nico and I have been cooking like this for a long time, right, Nico? Nice? And before that, Ella. To be able to deal with these horrible things that you know are sending patients and families reeling and reeling for years, perhaps. And then to be able, in some way, to set that aside and go home and, and you know, have a picnic with the kids. It's, it's, there's, there's a disconnect there that oftentimes feels surreal. Like He picked a lot of intense things in his life. He picked a high-maintenance job, a high-maintenance wife, and, and then a family that he really wants to be very involved with. So he, he keeps, he's amazing at keeping a lot of balls in the air, but they're all bowling balls. Thank you. All right, new recipe. All right, Everybody you. taste it. Oh, oh, this is spicy, spicy. How was it? Good. When we were driving in, I was thinking, I can either be really freaked out and waste my time being freaked out, or I can be calm. Yeah. So I'm choosing the second option. Um, my daughter is here. They have a heart for her. You can go right on up. Transplantation offer no cares in the middle of the night for various different reasons. Hi, sir. How you doing? Yeah. yeah? Tired? Yeah, and starving. We've all been quite concerned about Sarah because the risk of sudden death is quite high in patients who have her condition. The surgery has different components. If you don't want me to go into the details, Sarah, you no, tell me. No, I like the details. Do you, do you like to hear the details? Okay. Yeah. We'll go on the uh, heart lung machine. Uh, and then we'll take out the old heart, and when the new heart gets there, we'll start that uh, reimplantation process. The moment of truth is when we take the clamp off and reperfuse the heart. Mm -hmm. um, see if it starts beating on its own. Uh, not to see if it starts beating, but anticipating that it that will, will start, start beating. beating. Yes, okay. absolutely. The surgical team just left to go harvest the heart, and in reality, we will know if it's any good for Sarah till they actually get there and get a chance to examine it. To see previous episodes of Boston Med, go to bostonmed.abcnews.com. We just got a 90-year-old guy that came in that fell on the escalator at the mall and hit his head. I'm Amanda, one of the nurses. There's gonna be lots going on right now, okay? Behind every diagnosis is a patient. I always try to put myself in their shoes. Like, if this was my grandmother, what would I want them to do for her? And how would I want the nurse to act? So, sir, you were going up an escalator and you fell. That was pretty dumb. Well, I don't know that it was your fault. Sir, I'm gonna put an IV in your arm over here, okay? You're gonna feel a poke. One, two, three. My parents got divorced when I was, like, nine years old. I didn't have anybody there to kind of say, do your homework, get your homework done, you need to study for this test or anything like that. I don't know, I just did it. Maybe because I kind of had to take care of myself a lot growing up is why I went into this profession to help take care of other people. I think your girlfriend's here. Oh. <laughs> My name's Amanda, I'm his nurse. You have a good sense of humor, but I don't think you're going to see it right now. <laughs> you gave me a big scale. Well, Has you went here? down with a bang deal. Did I break the escalator? No, it broke you. <laughs> I think it's so sweet. Little old people in love. I hope that I can be that lucky someday. Rob's a nice guy, but it didn't end up going anywhere. <laughs> your ring is beautiful. When is your wedding shower? I don't know. That's what we're talking about. Oh, right. You wouldn't know. My wedding shower is going to have to be like handicap accessible because I'm probably not going to get married until like 90. <laughs> It's 5.30 and they're giving me the uh, go ahead to sign out. Whenever, just sign out to the service. See you later. Yeah, Thanks. Nice you. you too. This is pretty sweet. It's before 6 p.m. and I'm getting to go home. Oh, man. Third quarter, we're up uh, five points. Not bad, not bad. We need to do this all the time. Yeah. We do do it all. <laughs> Bardouche, uh, Andrew, he's definitely my best friend in our intern class, someone who I'll be friends with my whole life. The two of us are very outgoing people and like to certainly have fun. Yeah, I'm big into nicknames. So my name is Andrew L. Bardisi. Bardouche, uh, 
you know, it evolved like like removing the L from the bar D C, removing the D C from the bar D C and just combining bar and douche. You know, he uh just has this sort of essence about him. A lot of people uh started <laughs> started calling him uh, a douche or a douchebag for some reason. <laughs> and I love it, honestly. You know, I nurses, mean, I mean, nurses will page Dr. Dr. Bardouche, Dr. L. Bardouche. People really think that's his name. I convinced him it was a compliment, so he agreed to take on the name Bardouche. The amount of drama that occurs in those four towers, an intern who slept with a fellow. We have a fellow who's sleeping with a physician assistant. It's crazy. Uh, I'm not going into some of the other things because then it gets personal. Shall we head out? I think we should go. Let's do it. Blood, 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 bloody, bloody, blood. Oh, but it is, but it is history. Yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> I love you. I'm gonna watch. Goblet of Fire. Harry Potter. Hello. We are taking off in a few minutes. And there's a question whether or not the OR time over there is going to be delayed. When you have a better sense for the timing, why don't you give me another call? This particular donor for Sarah's transplant, there are many teams coming from all over the United States, and so there are inherently going to be unexpected delays. Hey, this is the <laughs> <laughs> Wait, wait, that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> this is the <laughs> 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 Ian and Sarah, the whole way up here. <laughs> Talking, 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 really super, super fast. Hey, how you doing? They're waiting for us to tell them that the heart looks good, so they can just take the, take the recipient to the OR back in Boston. All right, not a bad crowd tonight, so we'll see what happens. I am single. I don't have a family. I probably like to go out more than most of the people in our residency program. So Pyle is at the Liberty once again, looking very beautiful. Thank you, Rick. So what did you think of Prashant? <laughs> You're a good wingman, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I tried to set her up with Prashant. It sounds like it didn't go so well, though. I mean, I just don't know him. I talked to him okay. like 10 minutes. Yeah, but you guys are both Indian. You should be able to yeah, get along. So no, no, no. I think that's absolutely appropriate. So Indian people automatically get along with yeah, all that's, Indian but, but, people? Unequivocally, yes, Indian and they people. they should only date other Indian people? I am Egyptian, and I think that it wouldn't be bad if only Egyptians dated Egyptians. Pardish, I totally oh, disagree with you. I, so I think it's absolutely so true. Clarify, you're only going to date someone that's your race. No, no, no. I think the probability of me actually having a successful relationship with someone of my race is much higher than me having a successful relationship of, let's say, with you or... Or him. Richard, <laughs> if he were to be a female. You know, I'm pretty happy right now as it is. I can work late and not have to worry about coming home. And I can go out whenever I want to. However, I don't want to wake up and be 40 or 50 and, and you know, not have a family. Hello? Okay. Um, I, I mean, I would say that this, this type of delay is, 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 is now um, close to being unacceptable. My concern, obviously, is you've been in there for th over three hours, three and a half hours now, with both the chest and the belly open. Each half hour that you're in there, you know, there's risk of losing the donor organ, so we can't wait indefinitely. To learn more about congenital heart disease, go to bostonmed.abcnews.com. You guys gonna go check out the baby? Yeah, check the baby. It's good. Our shot pregnant woman appears to be stable now. The bullet took out one of the arteries that supplies the muscle of the heart itself. So we'll get an ultrasound at this point in time and see how it looks. It looks like it might be outside. Yeah. Some abnormality in the 
atrium adjacent to the area that was injured. The bullet was intact, so I don't think it's a fragment, but she could have clot in there. I'm just trying to guess what, because it looks like it, you know, it almost looks like it has a brighter tip. We don't know what this is. Is this some blood clot? Is this a bullet fragment uh, that we missed? Uh, I need a cardiologist here now. Hi, this is Mindy. I found a fellow to come um, up and take a look at the sacco. I'm trying to figure out why they're giving her a hard time about coming down and taking care of this thing. All right, so I'll do a focus study then. The guy could have been down here and back in the time it takes to argue why he shouldn't come down here. No one's able to come down, then I'll just bring the pictures back up. God damn it. No one's available to come down right now. One so the what's the turnaround yeah. time on this? As soon as, I, as soon as I take the images, I go up. Where do you, where is that? Do you want to take it off? Um, second okay, floor. We'll leave it on and monitor. So no one can walk up two floors. Who's the attending? Okay. These folks get into their little worlds, you know, and they just read images, and they forget that there's a patient on the other end. It's like, okay, here's someone who you can't sit and wait for the image report. So get your ass down here and look at the patient and do what needs to be done. You know, it's not that hard. What we've got going basically is um, some type of echogenic structure. This is not going to be an artifact. It looks like it's in the tissue, not, because not in the lumen. Ultimately, this wonderful cardiologist came down, interpreted the images, said this was not a bullet fragment. She sees this routinely on valve repairs of the heart, and the heart would heal on its own. Swallow that. No, it's a swallow. Yeah. How was it? Oh. Pretty bad. Yeah, that face says it all. <laughs> it has like a tingle to it. My colleagues just called. They are headed back with the organ now. Everything went well. The car was a very nice car. Beating. <laughs> Powerful breathing, so we are really happy. Here you are, Miss Francis. We can probably start, um, you know, work on getting her down to the operating room. Keep your hands inside, okay, Sarah? She's got quite a bit of family up there. It's going to take you at least half an hour to get her down there. I think she's ready. I think she's more ready than I am. Right. I love you. Bye. Love you. Bye. See you on the other side. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Hi, Meg. Bye. <laughs> bye, sweetheart. Bye. We'll see you in a while. Yeah. Any other byes? Bye. I say yeah. them. Good luck. We're going on a cruise. Now we recruited one more for the girls' cruise. Let's <laughs> see this. Um, oh my God, I'm so excited. And me too. You don't even know. Yeah. I haven't been on vacation without my children ever. You're lying. No, I'm not. <laughs> Should be fun. Hi. It's fun to hang out with friends at work, but it's even more fun when it's unsupervised. It's party time. It's my very first cruise, so I wasn't expecting the electric slide right off the bat. I thought we'd be like ease into it a little, little bit, but they're like going all out right out of the bat. I need another one too. Here you go. Be generous. So-and-so is shampooing their hair. Yeah. So-and-so oh. is going to the bank. Damn Facebook. Facebook brings back a lot of people. You yeah. don't need to be seen again. <laughs> my friend is friends with my ex-boyfriend on Facebook, and I uh, made her go sign on, and I went on his account, saw all kinds of pictures with him and his new girlfriend. Yeah, it's like a kick in the gut. Owie. Yeah. This yeah. was a very long term. Right? Six, Six years. years. Mm-hmm. We met when I was 20 years old, so I just saw my other single girlfriends going out and having fun and thought I was missing out, but really, I wasn't missing out on anything. <laughs> Grass yeah. is always greener on the other side. Right. I think I'm Like, I love being married and I love my husband, but I miss the the drop of the hat, you know? Do whatever the heck you want to do. Boom, go. See, I hate having, like, random losers hit on you. And the last time we went out, I got told by two different guys that I had big shoulders and big hips. 
in one night. <laughs> That's the equivalent of saying you have the biggest beer gut or man boobs I have yeah. ever seen in my entire life. Mm -hmm. That's not okay to say. And why do they feel they need to tell you this exactly? He wanted to dance with me. I was like, no, I'm, I'm all set. You know, I'm here hanging out with my friends, whatever. And he got mad. And he said, well, it's fine because you have big hips anyway. And I said, well, that's fine because you probably have a small penis anyway. <laughs> what a jacket. Yeah. <laughs> back in here, it's like a punch in the face. All the smells and sounds come right back to you. We're about 10 minutes out. He does have major oral trauma and a large laceration through the chin. Back in the trenches, party is over. Sarah Dumas for a heart transplant. Absolutely. So Whenever sorry. your kids are sick, as a parent, you want to fix them. And when you can't fix them, you feel as though you're you're helpless. We're going to go ahead and uh, get her chest all opened up. As soon as the harvesting team lands at the airport, we'll go on the heart lung machine. Once they arrive in the hospital, we'll cut out her old heart and we'll be ready to uh, implant a new one. So this is like a little bit been like being a cook, you're sort of setting the table, and when the heart gets here, it's like making a meal. Hi, Victor. Hey, guys, how you doing? Welcome. So we're getting ready to cut out the old heart. We took, this is the central line. Okay, there you go. The old heart is clearly very thick, very stiff. You watch. It's still beating. No, you make the heart beat. Are you ready for the heart? Yes, sir. That was great. Okay. My son, he's seeing everything that's happening and he's gonna be put on the transplant list, so he knows that all of this is coming his way. I'm glad I'm going second, so that I know sort of what it's gonna be like. Scissors, please. So you can see this, the heart's starting to beat, you can see the EKG, so that's always a reassuring moment. Before we close the chest, we wanna be sure that everything is dry. Linda? Uh, we had some bleeding from the back of the heart, which is impossible to repair without going back on bypass. We're just going back on the heart machine to fix the bleeding site. It's been, what, six hours? I'm anxious about getting information because it's difficult when I don't know what's happening. the table back to his midlife please. Teenagers like Sarah are very resilient. It's very hard to deal with bleeding from the back of the heart, but we got it fixed, so it's good as new. Okay, great. All right. We're all done. I want to close the chest and, uh, and then I'll go out and talk to the folks. I would imagine the family is uh, pretty anxious. I'm sure they're exhausted. I'm not sure what they know. Hi, guys. Hi. 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 You have a seat? So we're, uh, we're all done. She's doing okay. We got her old heart explanted, and that went fine. And got the new heart in, and that seems to be working just fine for her. We came up bypass and had some bleeding behind uh, the heart, so I decided to just go back on briefly, went back on and stopped the heart for you know, 10 minutes and were able to get the bleeding controlled. All right, so I'll be right back with you, okay? You. All right, good. It's my pleasure, sure. All right. Thanks so much. Sure. This is terrible. Why is he going to come back in a minute? I don't know. He's going to call. He's going to go check something. I out. know. My point. Getting paged uh, back to the OR after you've closed is never a good thing. Perhaps she's bleeding again. It's 
uh, 11 days after Patricia Baker was uh, shot in the heart. She's now 28 weeks pregnant and see how mom and baby are doing. I remember everything that happened up until the point where I told my neighbor that I was shot. I fell in the hallway. And no one knew that I had been shot but me. I'm watching a movie on DVD, and uh, that's when it all started, 2 a.m., and a lot of people came over. When he saw the kid with the gun, he shut the door to the living room. And he shot through the door, and Patricia happened to be right there, 10 feet away. So all I could think about was get the baby out so that the baby can live. I still shut my eyes at night and think about it, you know? I thought it was over. I'm like, wow, I just lost a child and, and, and a good girl, you know? Hmm. This is my oldest daughter when she was probably about 17. Amanda when she was about 10. Samantha when she was two. Hello, Miss Baker? It's Jeff Houston. Hi. Oh, you look like a new person. Every day seems a little bit better. Uh, have the obstetricians been by, or did they? Yes, they come by once a day to ultrasound the baby. Okay, and they said everything's okay. Yes, All the right. baby's great. I mean, you could see that it was a boy, you know? Good. And uh, they're like, wow, he's well endowed. <laughs> I was like, oh, my God. We're good. All right, glad All right. to see you're doing well. Just grateful to be alive. Okay. All, right. All right. She's oh. doing well. It's, yeah, I mean, that's, that's very rewarding, you know? It's huge, 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 huge. Sarah has really put us through a roller coaster today. Uh, I don't know if she's bleeding or why she's so unstable, but we, I need to get back in there and take a look. What's going on? Right so she got really hypotensive. It was just so dramatic. Just it went straight down to like 45 or so. Oh. Yeah. It's like too many swings in her blood pressure. I'm not going to be able to handle this really too much longer, so somebody better say something. Keep having these unexplained swings in blood pressure. Blood pressure goes to 150, and then she's down to the 40s. I think now we gotta get her up to the ICU so she can be closely monitored. I'm not sure there's anything else for us to do down here in our operating room. She has these profound spikes in blood pressure. We've seen this with a couple of transplant I patients, I, I but know. I don't recall it being this acute after transplants. It is pretty, pretty strange that she she has this swings in blood pressure. Hi, right, so I wanted to give you another update. She's fine, she's stable, but she, um, you know, she's exhibiting these kind of swings in blood pressure. Blood pressure gets pretty high, then it gets low, then she's stable for a while. So we'll just have to see how the next 12 to 24 hours go. That Sarah gave us her a real scare, uh, but uh, as I expected from Sarah, she made remarkable recovery, and uh, I'm very pleased overall with how she's done, and I think she's going to go on and do very well. How you doing, Sarah? Good. Up around, you know. Up and around, good. And out of here tomorrow. Perfect. Yeah. You excited about getting getting out tomorrow? Oh yeah. You tried to slow me down a little bit yeah, there the early on at the yeah. beginning, but I think we caught up. Yep. You did great. <laughs> She looks fantastic. She's back to being the old Sarah. It's really just very gratifying. It'll be interesting to be able to like go upstairs or run or swim or anything really without being out of breath. That's why I wrote what I wrote on the window. It's good to be alive backwards so you can read it from outside, I hope. The very look like this. Uh -oh. <laughs> Listen, would you stop startling me? <laughs> Dad! You can see the eyes. This is the cheek and the chin. I'm just so glad he's safe. It's amazing the turnaround that's happened. I feel like I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. Life is really good right now. When I went on the cruise, I never thought that I would be talking again to my ex-boyfriend. And now we're engaged and planning our wedding, so it's exciting times. Now I have the house and the guy, and um, babies will be a few more years before that happens. Jay's home. Hey. Hey. There's no other person I want to be with. She's my best friend. She always has been. She always will be. 
It's been eight months since we reunited. And it feels so good. <laughs> <laughs> I could never have done this. Boston Med. An eight-year-old with some kind of cardiac arrest. You just make sure she's got a good pulse. Her heart goes crazy. I have a five-year-old son, and I can't imagine how it must feel. She's in VTAC. Clear? They can't get a baby out. This is a stat. I know it's scary. Ah! What's up? Can I have an available OB? I would not want to date me right now. Rachel's the one that I want to marry. I may not be the marrying kind. And Jeff should definitely dump me. So if this guy dies because his insurance company wouldn't approve a visit, we don't have anything else to offer him. If it were your wife laying in that bed, you would stop treatment. 